Hello and thanks for watching my video. Here we're going to be talking about the Tequatl world boss fight. Uh, I'm going to be talking about all the different mechanics uh, and you can see here uh, I'm actually on one of the turrets here in the Tequatl map and this is in Blood, uh, Blood Tide Coast. And these are the very important turrets that you actually get for this boss fight. You actually have six of them across the map. Uh, and you can see here they have different options. You've got skill three, which actually helps cleanse the Zerg that's attacking uh, sort of to Quattle, uh, from poison. You'll notice here I've clicked on one of my guildmates. You can see the the actual boons that the uh, he will get because of the um, the effect that I'm putting on him. And again, they get some extra boons: vigor, regeneration, and protection, along with might, fury, and quickness from uh, skill four. And so again, we've got cleanse. That's actually removes poison from your opponent, uh, from your, sorry, ally, uh, who's attacking Tequatl. Uh, skill 2 was actually if you, uh, Tequatl actually gains hardened scales and you want to keep using skill 2. If you ever do get the turrets destroyed, box of repair hammers is always useful to repair them. And what happens, you'll notice there's a little group over here. They actually, uh, that you'll get a lot of um, enemies that will spawn out of that particular submerged boat. But you never want to have more than five, because if you get any more than that, then you'll start spawning champions. Because of the amount of people, obviously it upscales. And so you only ever want five people to stop uh, you know, the, the boat um, uh, undead. Otherwise, you'll get, end up spawning champions. So here you go, here's the other three uh, on the right hand side. And they tend to be numbered in the map. Again, we have another boat here and that's where more spawn, uh, more undead spawn. And again, you only want maximum of five people at this location uh, to stop the undead. And you'll notice we actually have jumping pads and we're gonna launch ourselves from here. It's a quick way to get around the map. And you'll notice this is like one of the panels, uh, one of the control stations for the vigil laser. The Vigil Mega Laser is the thing that will actually make Tequatl pretty vulnerable, so you do need to protect that when he sort of leaps away and you're not, you're not attacking him anymore. This is the West defense point, or the West uh, uh, sort of event that goes on, and the idea is that you take you have to destroy all the sort of Tequatl's fingers and the, the claws that will actually spawn out of the ground. And so here, here's the Vigil Mega Laser again. This is the most important part of the map. Uh, you need to make sure that that is defended when he, he sort of Tequatl goes off because lots of undead will spawn, as you'll see a bit later. And the idea is to make sure that this stays uh, defended. Uh, and then you can use the launch pad to get back to the Zerg and you can get back in and kill Tequatl. That's the aim in theory anyway. You'll notice obviously we're still loading up this map. Um, we've still got another 13 minutes to go. If you notice the clock on the bottom of my mini map, uh, it spawns at around half past 11. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be waiting around for. But I've decided to speed it up a little bit. So we've cut it in here. Uh, I've cut it in because I didn't want to hang around. So you'll notice that Tequatl's uh, where he is. Uh, apologies if there any lag involved. I was actually rendering a video at the same time, <laughs> stupidly, um, when Tequatl spawned. Uh, and you can see here, there's lots of poison fields going down. But you notice they're getting cleansed by the guys on the turret, so they're very, very handy. You'll notice as well that you'll get these claws that will spawn out, and they do a lot of damage. Uh, and Mesbers are effective at taking those out. So obviously we're actually one of the rare occasions I actually die. And you want to waypoint back to this waypoint uh, because you don't want to waste people's time resurrecting you. It's just not worth it. Especially if there's so many people down. It's just quicker just to get back to this waypoint uh, and then run back to the Zerg and carry on fighting. So what you're going to do, you're going to see me attack um, to Quattle for a fair bit uh, and we're, we're going to skip through. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this bit till Tequatl actually becomes vulnerable uh, and we'll move on to the first stage.
There was one thing I didn't really mention, and that's talking about Sequothal's attacks. He does do this devastating attack where he stomps down and actually causes a massive wave, a tidal wave, and you can actually jump over that by pressing the space bar. Uh, you'll see here, I'm in first person mode. This is interesting, this is the first term I've ever done Sequothal in first person, and it's probably not what I'm going to do again, because all these stomps and bounces, my camera's going like crazy here. Um, so I'm going to zoom out and carry on. But he does a couple of other attacks, he makes uh, sort of you run away from fear, uh, that's an annoying one, but it's these AOE damage effects that they sort of they're the main killer for the, for the Zerg, um, and then combine that with that huge tidal wave can really wipe a, a sort of a, a Zerg pretty quickly. So you can see there, everyone's running away from the fear that Tequatl had uh, inflicted on all of us. But the ma majority of us, you can see here that they're stacking very well. I admit it, oh, and then we've got jump over the wave. Some of them people didn't. Um, but the idea is to stack at the point. It's ideal to have a sort of uh, commander there. But you notice these swirling whirlpools. That means you can see at the top left, uh, sort of Tequatl, sorry, at the very top. He's gone invulnerable. That means we're about to go and fight to the, uh, defend the positions. Those um, swirling whirlpools will drag you down and you have to swim back up to the top. And it's sort of a race against time before you die. Uh, not too challenging, really. So we already looked at the Western Battery, uh, and now what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at each of the different batteries uh, for the defense. And the idea is that you wait for the Mega Laser to be charged, and then you can run back. So here we have the Northern uh, uh, Battery, and the idea is to jump around and these grub holes, because veteran grubs will spawn, and as you can see here, I'm suffering major lag <laughs> uh, because of the rendering that I've got going down. Uh, and um, just to let you know, guys know that the veteran grubs that when they do spawn will cause significant damage to yourself uh, and to, to the actual battery as well. So you do want to make sure that the battery uh, is uh, protected and by stomping all of these grub holes. So that is the way to defend this. You obviously you're getting certain ads that are coming along, um, and uh, I'm, I'm, this is te this video will teach me not to ever render a video while I'm playing Guild Wars 2 because it you can't really do both at the same time. It's, it was killing my processing power, so I actually decided to pause the rendering while I actually finished off this Tequatl fight because not only have I got a, the Guild Wars 2 running, which is a significant process, I actually have the recording software Bandicam running. And then I also have this rendering software, which is record sort of um, rendering my video, my latest video, uh, and that really just killed all of the bandwidth. So all, all of the processing power, not bandwidth. But um, anyway, so as we get carrying on, again you see that scrubs are starting to spawn, and uh, you know the northern battery you can see is struggling now. It, but we're only 20 seconds away, so fortunately someone resurrected me. When it gets to around 30 to 20 seconds, you want to jump back and run back to the position, ready to fight to Quattle. And this is what is known as the burn phase. So when Tequatl uh, gets vulnerable, the, re the Zerg should get back there and really this is where you do majority of his damage. Remember we spent uh, around, because it takes up to around 8, you know, sort of down to 8 minutes from when he first spawns uh, when to get him down to 75% health. So he's at 75% health, our objective is to get him down to 50% health. So we're going to be doing might stacks, we're going to be using ice bows, you can see the amount of damage that we're getting here with the ice storm uh, and the, you know the, uh, all the damage we're doing here, meteor shower, I'm doing 7k damage for per sort of meteor strike and the idea is to get him down to 50% health without needing to carry on because it, any burn that doesn't manage to get in, into the next stage straight away hasn't been an effective zerg. Um, effective burn. So here we go, we failed with that. Um, unfortunately, he's just above 50%. So we are going to really try and nuke him down, try and cleave him down that little bit extra. Can we get it? It shouldn't take too much longer though. Uh, you'll notice he's got those sort of the AoE effect coming in again. So we've got the guys on the turrets that are cleansing us, hopefully. Uh, and that's what you're doing in this Zerg. Uh, you know, this used to be a really, really challenging event. Um, again, he's, he's hit us with the wave, but we've done it. We've actually got him less than 50%, so the next event uh, occurs. But um, yeah, when Tequatl first got modified, he was really challenging because obviously people didn't know what to do. But now you've got, as long as it's organized and you have enough people, it's a very simple fight to do. But it does require you to be organized. And if you are not organized, you are going to fail. It's as simple as that. Um, if you don't uh, get yourself uh, into position, then you're really going to struggle. 
So here we are, we are actually fighting uh, on the eastern side now, and the idea is to stop these uh, play carrier abominations from getting anywhere near the battery because they'll do significant damage. Uh, and you can do that by pushing them away, using conditions like sort of CC skills, um, you know, being an elementalist on my staff here, I've got a number of different skills, I'm trying to freeze them or cripple them. Uh, I'll generally just stop them from actually getting anywhere near the battery. Uh, and remember this is the, you know, we're down to 50%. Well, once we uh, get to this next stage, we'll hopefully get him down to 25%. But Torquato initially was a very, very hard boss and it took uh, several months for people to actually properly um, get used to how to fight Torquato. Uh, and now um, that, that he's actually been out for over, you know several for a while now that he you know since the modification um, and you know you got the jungle worm the triple jungle, uh, head jungle jungle uh, jungle worm which is much more challenging than this uh, but to quattle as again you can fail to quattle it unless you actually do it you know you get everyone organized beforehand you will fail it's simple as that so again look we, we're down to um, 15 seconds so we're running back and we'll you know, st we'll uh, stack the mites so everyone's got as much uh, damage as possible. Um, I'll spawn my fire elemental to add a little bit of extra damage, and you know we'll be cleaving him down with the ice bows uh, and as much might as, as possible. So you see there, the vigil mega laser is charged. We're going to get back into the fray, uh, and you know where to stand. As long as you're doing a lot of damage, oh, that's pretty much all you need to worry about. Um, so I'm actually striking it to quite a while early, so he's already, he's not even landed and I'm striking him, so you can start fight, you know, attacking straight away, but the, this is the new sort of position, just it's sort of here, but you can try and do as much damage, sort of you get double damage a little bit, um, but yeah, generally this is a very nice fight, it, it does take a while for Tequato to spawn, so you do want to get into a map around 15 minutes before Tequato spawns, to make sure that everyone's set up, uh, and you've got enough uh, people at each location, as I mentioned, on the turrets, and the turrets know what they're doing, uh, and on the boats as well. And you can see there, it was a terrific burn, he's straight away, he's gone invulnerable, and he's down to 25%, so we only have one more sort of uh, defense, and then we're on to the final stage. So this time we're going to be defending the main vigil mega laser, and the idea is to try and stop enemies getting actually standing on that me me uh, vigil mega laser. You want to keep them away by using condition and, and uh, CC skills uh, because you'll get a lot of um, champions that will spawn around here. This is always the one that's defended the most by the most amount of people, so it does get the most amount of champions. You do not get champion loot boxes. There's no reason to actually, uh, you know, bother sort of worrying about champions that much. What you really want to focus on is making sure that they're off the individual mega laser. The main one here, there's this uh, crate that's undead. This guy does a huge ton of damage, so you want to kill him down as quickly as possible. He is pretty weak, uh, though, uh, defensively, so he is easy to kill, but he will do a lot of damage to the vigil mega laser, so make sure that you take him out as soon as you see him. Uh, again, you've got elite, you've got elite veterans, champions, so you want to make sure they're all taken out. This isn't too hard to defend, to be honest, um, because generally you will have a lot of people standing around this actual lo uh, particular location because it is pretty quick, quick, quick uh, pretty close to the actual Tequato uh, main boss fight. So again, we're getting down to the last few seconds, and then we are actually going to go back and we're going to finish Tequato off with the final burn. Okay, so we're in position and we are going to stack again the might. Um, I've popped up the birthday booster to give me that little bit of extra luck just in case, or that little bit of extra, you know, conditions and power damage. You notice a lot of people will spawn these fire elementals that they got this, the fire elemental powder uh, that allows them to create a sort of a summon, uh, and that's very useful because they do a lot of damage. So you'll see here we've got my fire elemental ready and we've got the ice bow, and that's doing, doing a lot of damage. So Quattro is going to get cleaved down very, very quickly, uh, and that'll be the end of this boss fight. So I'm hoping that for those of you who are pretty new to Guild Wars 2 or a bit hesitant to actually fight uh, to Quattro, it's very, very simple. This is how it's been done. Uh, it's not too challenging. 
as long as you're organized if you're not sure what to do get in the zerg uh, you know as long as you can do a lot of damage that's all that matters okay uh, so here we go we've done you know we completed the Tequato event and we'll get four chests because we've done that so here we go uh, you want to try and hope for something good but now we get a carved bone spoon hooray so many carved bone spoons um, you get them so often they are worth 10 silver so you can sell it back for to a merchant but uh, we'll get a lot of sort of not nothing too spectacular we'll get a few rares and such but um, yeah we'll get a nice lot of gold a bit of gold going on and you can see here these are the um, items I've got so thank you very much for watching my video guys if you've got any comments or any suggestions uh, about the Tukwoto fight and you weren't clear on feel free to leave them in the uh, comment section I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible uh, but yep, yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.